In this lecture, let's understand briefly about the common HTTP request methods which we use to make a request. The HTTP request methods, also called as HTTP request verbs, tell us the intention of the request, whether that request is going to fetch data in the response or whether the request is going to create a new data on the server or whether the request is going to update or delete an existing data on the server. So depending on the intention of the request, we use HTTP methods. Now there are many types of request methods available, but the five most commonly used and important ones are get, post, put, patch and delete. So these are the five most commonly HTTP methods which we use when developing a backend application. Here, let's briefly understand the use of each of them. So we use get HTTP method to fetch or retrieve data from the server. The data that we are fetching from the server can be an HTML page or static files like images, CSS files, etc. Or we can also fetch JSON data. So in simple words, in order to retrieve data, in order to fetch data from the server, we use get method. Then we have post HTTP method. We use post HTTP method to create a new resource on the server, to create a new entity on the server. And in order to create a new record, a new entity on the server, we also need to send the data with which we want to create a new record with the request body. For example, let's say we want to create a new user using a registration form. So in the registration form, we need to fill the details. And when we click on the create or register button, what will happen is a post request will be sent to the server. And with that post request, the data which we have entered in the registration form, that will also be sent as a request body to the server. And on the server, in our ASP.NET Core application, we write the logic to create a new user with the help of that request data which we have received. Okay, so we use post HTTP method to create a new resource, a new record, a new entity on the server. Then we have put and patch HTTP method. Both put and patch HTTP methods are used to update an existing resource on the server. So again, for example, let's say the user which we have created using the registration form with the help of post request, that user wants to change his details. For example, let's say he want to change his last name. So for that, since we want to update an existing user record on the server, we need to send a put or patch request. And with the put or patch request, we need to send the updated data with which we want to update the existing record. Now, the difference between put and patch is that with the help of put HTTP method, we need to update the entire data. For example, let's say the user has five fields, first name, last name, email, country and city. But we only want to update the last name of the user. So if we are using put request, in that case, we will have to send all these five properties in the request body of put request. Even though we are only updating one property, we are only updating last name, still we need to send all the five properties with the request body. But if we are using patch request in order to update an existing resource, in that case, we only need to send that property in the body which we actually want to update. We need not to send the entire user detail here. So this is the difference between put and patch. Then we have delete HTTP method. We use delete HTTP request in order to delete an existing record on the server or in the database. So these are the five most common and important HTTP methods which we use while developing a backend application. There are few others, but we are not going to talk about them because they are not that important. Now let's talk about each of these HTTP methods one by one in detail. And let's start with get HTTP method. So as we learned, we use get HTTP method, we use get HTTP verb in order to fetch or retrieve data from the server or the database. Here, for example, let's say we are making a get request to this URL. So here we have root URL slash customers. So when we are making a get request to this URL, we are telling the server that we want to get all the customers in the response. So here you can see in the response, we are getting all the customers. And keep in mind, since using get request, we request data from the server. We do not need to send data with the request body. If we want to send some data to the server with the get request, we use either query strings or route parameters. We usually do not send the data to the server with the request body in case of get request. So let's say 
if we want to get the details of only a single customer by the customer id we can send a get request and there in the url we can specify the id of the customer for which we want to get the details here to specify the id we are using route parameters but we can also use query strings here okay so here when we are making a get request we are getting the data of a single user based on the user id so get request is very simple now let's talk about post request so as we learned we use post request to create a new record a new entity on the server or in the database so to this url when we were sending a get request we were receiving a list of customers or a list of users but on the same url when we are going to send a post request it is going to create a new record a new customer on the server and to create that new customer or that new user on the server we need to send the customer or the user details with the post request so we are gathering that detail using this registration form so in this registration form when the user or the customer enters his details and click on this create button a post request will be sent to the server with these details and on the server a new user or a new customer will be created with these details so keep in mind with the post request we need to send some request body then we also have put request so we use put request to update a user on the server or in the database for example let's say here we want to update the last name of this user so there what we will do is instead of smith we will provide some other last name for example let's say john right okay so here we simply want to change the last name of this user and we will click on this update button so when we click on this update button a put request will be sent to the server and with that put request all these details will be sent not only the updated detail but all the details will be sent with the put request body and then on the server all these details will be updated for that particular user now keep in mind that when we use put method we always need to specify a unique identifier based on which we want to update the resource here if you see we are using the id of the customer in order to uniquely identify it and then we are updating that customer based on its id and as we learned the put method updates the complete resource even though we are only updating a single property then we also have the patch http method patch http method also updates an existing resource on the server but the difference between put and patch is that with the patch request we do not need to send entire data we only need to send that data which we actually want to update for example again if we use this form to update the customer with this id 101 and there if we change the last name of the customer from smith to something else and when we click on this update button in case of patch request only that last name will be sent with the request body not the entire detail only the last name will be sent with the request body and that will be updated on the server and just like put method with the patch method also we always need to specify a unique identifier based on which we want to update the resource here we are using the id of the customer as the unique identifier in order to update that customer finally we also have the http delete method to delete a resource on the server and just like put and patch in order to delete a resource on the server we need to uniquely identify that resource based on some unique identifier for example let's say if we want to delete a customer with this id 101 here we are uniquely identifying that customer with his id in order to delete that customer from the server and since we are deleting a record here we do not need to send any data with the delete request body now always remember that when you are sending a delete request to the server before deleting a resource you must first show a pop up asking the user whether he really wants to delete the resource or not because it might be possible that the user has by mistake clicked on the delete button but actually he don't want to delete the record okay so it's always a good practice that when you are sending a delete request to the server before deleting the resource first you must ask user whether he really wants to delete the resource or not for that you can show a confirm dialog box like this if the user clicks on this delete button that means he really wants to delete the record 
but if he clicks on this cancel button that means he do not want to delete the record okay so if he really wants to delete the record he can click on this delete button and in that case that resource will be deleted from the server in our case that customer will be deleted from the server from the database so this was a very high level overview of the five most commonly used http request methods and what is the use of each of them now here we learned that with some of the request methods for example with the post request method with the put request method or with the patch request method we also need to send some request body to the server so how can we read this request body from our asp.net co application let's see that in our next lecture this is all from this lecture thank you for listening and have a great day